Hey guys, National Master James Canty III here, and today we are going over Sicilian Dragon versus Sicilian Accelerated Dragon. Which one is better, which one do I prefer, and what you can do today. So let's get right into it. Alright, so the Sicilian is an opening for black, actually. So after E4, we have C5, and there's many different Sicilians you can play. White can make many moves here, Knight F3 is the mainline stuff, but you got D4, you got C3, you even have B4 as a wing gambit, all this other weird Sicilian stuff. But E4, C5, Knight to F3, that's the usual stuff. After Knight F3, we have D6, which is Dragon, and then you have G6, which is Accelerated Dragon. There is a difference, and we'll, we'll go through that. So after Knight of Three, there's D6. Let's go over the Dragon first. Very sharp opening. The idea of the Dragon is to actually just, you know, Knight of Six, G6, Bishop G7, castle and attack the King side, or the Queen side, where his King usually castles too. If not, if they castle King side, then you just have nice play in the center. Uh, with your pieces so that's what it's about here now let's see what white does d4 the main line move pawn takes knight takes d4 knight f6 we def we attack this pawn knight to c3 he defends the pawn and then g6 this is the next move so we actually play g6 after d6 and usually an accelerated dragon you kind of hold the d pawn for a certain reason we'll see what that is in a minute g6 is the move after g6 you have bishop to e3 and um after bishop e3 there's bishop g7 now in this position uh, bobby fisher has a game here against bent larson and crushed him i mean destroyed him now of course bobby fisher was known for doing that because it's bobby fisher but at the same time the game was devastating and he did have something about this structure that black plays the dragon here he had it in his book uh, Bobby Fisher, 60 memorable games. He's talking about, I had the dragon down to a science. All I got to do is castle queen side, sack, sack, and mate. That's exactly what he was saying. So with here, uh, let's see exactly, kind of follow some of the moves here from the game. After bishop g7, he has, I think he played f3, just to stop knight to g4, hitting his bishop. After that, um, there's castles, which is usual stuff. Bishop to c4. I think he played queen d2 actually first, though, because he's already aiming to this side of the board. After that, we have knight to c6, and then bishop to c4. So he just developed a piece. Bishop d7 happened. We had a castle happen. I think it was maybe rook c8 or a6, something like that. But rook c8, and then I know he backed up here. So the idea here, four and actually i think he played a6 and after that there's g4 h4 bishop h6 h5 you do not have enough time here for black to be to make this work and i think this bishop is what really helps defend the the queen side here because a lot of times you can do all of this with white without moving this bishop to c4 so if you're playing the white side of this let's actually flip the board to show you the devastation of how it can look with white pieces here um i am very comfortable i have h4 h5 bishop h6 Okay, let's actually just make the moves here. B5, let's go H4. B4, I'm actually going to go here. Uh, maybe even A5. We need to try to do something as quickly as possible. H5, this is actually not working right now. So what do I actually even do? Opening the file could be a thing, but I mean, what what's my follow-up? I don't see one. Maybe knight a7, rook a8. Let's try rook a8. Uh, rook a8 to play a4. We got to do something. Bishop h6 happens. A4. Let's put this bishop maybe. Do I even need to take this? What about takes? Tactics win games. So takes, takes. Queen here. Takes there. That's interesting. Very interesting. But let's just put the bishop here. Let's just get out of the way. Maybe a3. A lot of players would play this. A3. And now it's time to capture. Capture, capture. Pawn takes. I am coming in here whether you like it or not. If pawn takes, then there's a check here. King h8 and g5 happens. And this is lights out. I mean, this is this is out. This is game over already. It's always fun to play this position with white. And this is just black when, when we're trying to do something. Imagine if black's doing nothing and not even and just oblivious of what's going on here. He's getting crushed quickly, very, very fast in the dragon. And this is the dragon setup, guys. So this is a setup you have to go for to plans and ideas. If you do play the dragon now, this is what you got to look forward to and know that you need to play on the queen side as quickly as possible. There are even books out there that talk about, and even games, of course, that you can look up, that you have to sack this rook on c3 in nice fashion. It's pretty fun. That's why Tao liked to play this a lot because you did you did these kind of sacrifices and stuff, and that's just right up his alley. So, you know, uh, it, it's ways to play it. Now, that that's the dragon here, but you do have to worry 99.999% time percent of the time. That you have to worry about getting mated on this side of the board. In the dragon. In the dragon. Now, let's take a look at the Sicilian Accelerated Dragon. A little bit different. Let's check it out. E4, C5, Knight F3. Now, instead of D6, we play G6. G6. Let's see it. Okay. D4, Pawn takes. There's Queen takes. 
which is a thing. And there's also night takes. So this is the mainline stuff. After night takes, there's night to c6. A little bit different. A little bit different. I still could probably play knight f6, but knight, knight c6 is actually the move. After knight c6, let's just go knight c3. Okay, bishop to g7, hitting this knight. Bishop e3. It, it looks basically the same, just the move's a little bit different, right? Okay, knight f6. Let's just keep doing the same stuff. F3. Now we're into the dragon. This is like the same thing, just mo different move order. They call it transposition. So after f3, we castle. Now let's go queen to d2. And here's the difference, guys. Oh my goodness. What is the difference? Why is everything so different now? Which one should I play? Pause the video. Can you find a move for black? When you replay the video, if you said d5, you are 100% correct. This is why the accelerated dragon is much 10 times better, a thousand times better. If you play the dragon, stop playing it. It's the accelerated dragon. I love this. I've been playing this for a very long time. I'm a wizard with this. Now I, I even play it, you know, I still play it um, today. But uh, right now I'm, I'm studying other Sicilians and other stuff, just becoming more versatile. Magnus Carlsen says you need to do that. You got to be more versatile, work his stuff, do play different openings, you know, and you become stronger. Um, in the process of doing it. So um, I played this since 2014. So six years now, I've actually been playing this opening. I've played this over the board probably a good, good amount, like 20 times probably. And I've lost two games ever, ever with this. And who did I lose to? I lost to uh, the International Master, which is super strong. Played a close Sicilian. And the other one, uh, oh, Grandmaster. Uh, last year, <laughs> played the Casader brother who actually like, almost won the Chicago Open I think so super super strong stuff uh, but it's it's ridiculously strong and I love it d5 this is the move why is it different well if we go d6 then he just castles and then he does all the other stuff and then you're not having a good day but if we play d5 it actually disrupts that temporarily if he castles well, then I can actually capture here so now after captures a lot of times you'll see captures here too which if they do we just trade everything off and we have a great position here actually i've actually had this live happen pawn takes knight to g4 bishop goes somewhere and then bishop h6 and have a good day it's actually over immediately let's actually move it to g1 i've actually had this bishop h6 and it's over you're already winning crushing out of the opening get him out of here so after after this they usually would take with the pawn or the knight but if knight takes well then thanks Thanks a lot. You open. This is exactly what we want. We're feeling great here. We're on the we're on on the uh, attack before white is. After pawn takes pawn takes, but well, then you do have knight g4 once again. I think knight g4 works here. Let me actually turn the engine on real quick. I think it's knight g4, but let's let's just make sure. So the engine's best moves right now. Oh, this is something for me to learn too. Is queen c7 really? Knight b5 seems scary though. So let's look at it. This is how I analyze an engine. I mean, actually, I got a video just for that in the membership site. I'm going to put a link to that under the video, but the membership site for the GM factory. We talk about how to analyze games with the engine. But queen c7, though. Queen c7, queen a5, and knight takes d4. I like queen a5. Queen c7, though, I have to see what happens on one of these knights coming to b5. So let's hit this one. What's the next move? Now it's queen a5 minus 2 almost. Oh, it is minus 2. Queen a5, very strong. Really? Queen c7. That's nice. That's real nice. How about knight b5? Knight b5, queen e5, or queen e5. Okay, that's nice. Hitting this pawn. Pawn's hanging, so this one's defending. So that's why this one's no, no good. But this one is the one because it still holds. So after it holds, queen e5, you probably still could play, but queen e5 is better according to the engine. It's like way better, minus two. The other moves, not even, it's still equal with the other moves. So that is insane, but it helps you out, guys, here. And this is what this is what you'll get the most when you play D5 here. Boom, after D5, you know, it gets aggressive because they're like, oh, wait, I can't mate you yet. I got to do stuff. So they capture. Then after you capture, whoa, you didn't open my bishop up. This is hanging, well, not hanging, but in a way it actually is. I've had people castle here before, which is just a blunder. Knight takes, and now if you take capture here, I just want a full piece out of the center due to the bishop and the queen connection. It is disastrous. So after knight takes, they're like, nah, not today. Take this, queen takes. Now my queen's out. Rook can swing over. Well, how about we take here? Take back, whoa, and then castle queen side. And the next move here, I think engine likes bishop e6 or f5. I haven't been here in a while. Bishop e6, yeah, it's both. Both moves work. Bishop e6 is number one, though. So after bishop, and, and you see you see, you're on the counterplay. Like, you're on the attack fast. Like, this stuff over here is nothing anymore. He hasn't even pushed the pawns yet, and we're talking about how we going to mate him. So this is exactly why the Accelerated Dragon has been served me the best to, um, um, still to today. The one that you will have the most trouble with, guys, and again, let's actually look at this one more time at both variations, e4, c5, 
knight f3, d6. If you play d6, hey, you are you, you're either getting mated or you you need to play very very tactical or like do something over here and know that he's about to come at your head and like uh ready to drop you as quickly as possible. So, if you play d6, now if you play g6, it's a little bit different. In fact, we'll say it's a little bit different because they have the same name sicilian dragon accelerated dragon but they're actually honestly completely different things because it's it's so much better to play the accelerated dragon after g6 uh, d4 pawn takes takes knight to c6 after knight to c6 they have the one that is probably going to give you the absolute most trouble is this one right here the accelerated dragon Maroxy bind Maroxy bind this one right here is probably the hardest to face it is but there's many ways to get around it which of course i just cover in, a, in the membership site and courses and stuff but this one is uh you have to play not completely different but you if you don't know what you're doing you're gonna get your head cracked and you just you're getting crushed right here because it's such a cramping position because the accelerated dragon is about playing d5 so if you can't play d5 it's kind of a weird game sometimes i'll play even e6 which it breaks rules i mean just kind of giving out some extra lessons here shout out to roman dg house really i got some co coaching from him but he does say that uh, bishop g7 you can't play e6 and g6 so if i'm trying to do this and then play bishop g7 this is going to leave a hole in my position that i will not come back from uh, let's point case in point right here something like this i'm not coming back from this it's just, i mean you you might you might you know depending on what your opponent's playing but this is disgusting you can't have this so you have to time it correctly if you are going to play e6 and d5 in any fashion ever because usually you don't move the e pawn you move the d pawn and even just outside of the sicilian the e6 g6 thing is is a rule you probably you just need to watch it and be careful if the d6 square is covered because if you i mean if you're playing g6 then like why is this bishop like what are you doing with this bishop where is this bishop unless you like blocking this diagonal it's like uh it's kind of useless it's kind of weird there we are yeah it's kind of weird so i have this here unless you put in the bishop here and you are weakening the king side so you know it, you have to have a reason for this kind of stuff so it needs to be a good reason too but that is uh that right there guys is the dragon and the accelerated dragon i highly recommend you check out the accelerated dragon if you need anything or help on that reach out to me on chess.com of course too i got the links under the video um let me know what you guys enjoyed here and if you really got some value from today's video make sure you hit the subscribe button like share this video also hit the membership site up i just posted week two's video uh videos in the membership site so shout out to all you guys and uh, i'll just see you on the next video we in here